What's up, my friends? My name is Benny, and you are in the Chop Shop. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this week's episode. Today is part two of my conversation with my good buddy Jay Perry, and I'm so excited that you're here. This second half of this conversation is fantastic. We talk about faith and how he found it, how it's changed his life, and how it's affected everything uh, since he's now a believer. Uh, in Jesus. And so um, I hope you enjoy. Let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, some of, some of Jay share some stories about just going to church for the first time, his experience, kind of how it affected him. And so, uh, yeah, uh, let's just jump right in. And here it goes. Part two of my conversation with Jay Perry. And bro, I walked into church and I literally went every single week after that till today yeah you know it was yeah. like i walked in the building and the first thing that i recognized was the hospitality like yeah i i was you know taught hospitality i did hospitality yeah. every day and i noticed it and right away i was like okay like, yeah. i see this you know <laughs> and then just that experience it was like my mom had brought us to church when we were kids i don't remember any like services but i remember like the halloween parties and jump houses yeah, and stuff right, like that right. like my little siblings um they remember it a lot more than i do but yeah i don't remember going to church at all right, right? and but i do remember using it as an excuse when i was in new age spirituality being like yeah my mom tried to take me to church but i just felt uncomfortable like i yeah. used to always use that line every time <laughs> to say like yeah no nah, religion is not the way like i used to always try to like do that and um but yeah bro i stepped into stepped into church and it was something that it was hard for me to even realize what was going on like i really like just pulled me in and i just i didn't know what it was but i just felt something i was like this is different yeah like, this feeling is different and like i'm a sensitive person when it comes to like things around me and like you know like if, if someone gets upset someone sits down and they're angry like i, I feel it you know yeah, like if right. someone's sad i feel it like yeah and so when i walked into the building i felt i felt the like the at the time i didn't know what it was looking back now i know mm -hmm. what the presence of god feels like yeah i was like it was the presence of god you know right and yeah that's that's what it was at that time bro is like so different for me you know yeah. and then yeah i started going every week all all of last year I started going every week and then I went a couple weeks with Zach and then he started a new job and he had to go at eight in the morning. I was yeah. like, I'm not going yeah. at eight. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm not that committed yet to yeah. go with you. So I was going alone. I would go by myself. Right. I'd pull up Dolo and just, you know, come to church. And I remember that feeling like I think most people have when they've never gone to church before. They're like, What do I wear? Like, yeah. yeah. I gotta put on my Sunday best. <laughs> like <laughs> I gotta wear a button up and right. I, like you know, and then just walking in and seeing people in hoodies, I was like, "Oh, this ain't this isn't yeah, like what I thought it, yeah. what I thought it was." You know, like a lot of people have like these preconceived notions about what church is gonna look like, what it's gonna be like. And for me, it was like I was actually just having this conversation on Sunday. It was like I walked in and like all that was just taken out. It was like, oh, nothing that I thought it was gonna be was that. It's mm -hmm. just all so much better. You know. Yeah. So. That's cool, man. Like, I, I think the, the man, it's so cool that, um, you know, you had a guy who was giving you trouble at first and, the, you know, the Lord uses him to really bring you in. Yeah. Um, but even just uh, his persistence and continually like to ask you, I think is just a, a testament. It just it, it shows that all of us like, hey, we just need to invite people yep. and they'll come. Yep. Sometimes it may take, you know, yeah. a while. Yeah. Sometimes it may not, you know, mm -hmm. like I like just thinking about I have a friend that I've been inviting to church for a while. Um, and, you know, every week it's, you know, nah, I can't busy, you know, maybe maybe next time, you know. Yep. But I am like convinced like one day I'm going to get him in there and I know, his, you know, his life will be changed, too. Yep. Um, so when you start coming to church, like how does that change your perspective like you know when it comes to like because you said you were uh experi like uh, experimenting with like new age yeah. as well and crystals like so when you experience 
the Lord, you experience God's presence. What does that start doing with the, the other things that are in your life? Yeah. Um, at the time, bro, nothing. It, it mm-hmm. honestly, it made it like these things. I, cause I believed in the universe. I was like, oh, right, the right. universe will guide me. The universe right. will guide me, whatever. At the time I was just like, okay god is the universe you know it was like yeah, yeah okay yeah. so the crystals okay like because i didn't know any biblical backing it was just sure. all based on feeling so i was right. like okay because bro I was like so at the end of at the end of my relationship my ex had gotten into tarot cards right okay and i was like oh, okay you know she like did a reading and stuff and like i was like dang that's crazy like you know like and just like the emotional part of it i was like yo this is cool you know yeah and then that that obviously ended and then fast forward there was this a girl that i met at someone's uh, one of my friend's birthday parties and she had a tarot deck and i was like oh yeah like cool like we could we have like something in common and like we like i let's start talking about the tarots and stuff so then i was i was like doing like listening to i had like multiple tarot decks and like i was listening to readings and i i started going to church and i was like oh this validifies these yeah. tarot readings right oh right. they come from god like yeah, yeah. I'm like oh okay like so naive and whatever but i was like oh, okay cool like so i was still doing the readings still yeah. into tarot yeah bro i remember i would i would come to church with crystals in my pocket you know like wow i'm like okay yeah. like god supports the, you know what i yeah, mean yeah, like i yeah. had no no clue at all so For i was sure. like okay like cool, i come to church i got my bro i'd carry the big the big quartz and the the <laughs> amethyst and the t- the tiger's eye and i had the beads and like yeah everything bro like and so for a while it was like it was like the feeling in my heart that changed it was the connection that changed it was the relationship yeah. where it's like okay like i i i i'm learning scripture when i go to church like i'm hearing scripture yeah, i sure. guess like i'm learning these things as i go along but it was really a process bro like that whole year that I was coming to church, I didn't, I didn't read the Bible at all. Yeah, you know, like right. I, I didn't like. There wasn't really much that changed dramatically right away, other than inside of me, mm. right? The outside world it stayed the same. I was still doing what I was doing, um, but conversations changed. Yeah. right? people yeah. noticed I was because I would post that I went to church, and like right. people would notice, and conversations would change, and and you know. I was I was obviously making music and there was a time where it's like every time I went to make music it would be like a sad song you know and I'm yeah. like I don't want to be that guy like yeah. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to be this guy that just people listen to when they're sad like I don't want right. to do this right so I was like all right I'm not going to make music for a couple months and this is like as I'm going to church or whatever and then I started making music again, and I was like, all right, I'm only making bangers. I'm not doing yeah, any yeah. slow stuff, right. any sad stuff, and I'm only making bangers. And, you know, I did that for a few months. And then I was like, I don't know, like something was just like, these are hard. Like, I would show my friends, and they're like, bro, like, what? This is tough. Yeah. But it, like, didn't, like, speak to me, you know? And I was just, and then I just got so frustrated, I just stopped making music in general. And, like, for the first time in my life, I was like, bro, I'm not making music. Like, yeah, I'm going to give it some months. Like, maybe I'll come back, but I don't even care right now. Yeah. And then as that, as that like, step away from music is happening, I'm still, you know, going to church. And Zach's invited me to be a part of these groups. Hey, you should right. come to these groups. And I'm just like. Yeah. No, like, <laughs> no, like, I don't, like, I don't want to do all that. And it, yeah, I had the conversation about sacrifice all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, now my understanding of sacrifice is so different. Even me coming to church on Sunday was a sacrifice. Now I can't work as late on Saturday. Yeah. Now my Sundays look different, right? Yeah. But I would go to church and then I would still work after. And then, um, you know, then as as time progressed, it was like, do a group. I'm like, then I got to sacrifice a tuesday night i'm like yeah i'm not doing that right yeah yeah. so but as all this is happening bro and like i feel like this change coming like just like this different sense of like understanding and peace and you know i went um i was from for the last few years i've been back and forth to la a lot yeah down there a lot like i said i have good friends that are in studios down there Uh, my best friend he's both of them both in studios so i'd go down there a lot and um and obviously, I'm around a lot of artists and, mm-hmm. and whatnot. But I went down there in 
September. And I remember I went down there and I was like, all right, now's the time. I think I'm going to find myself a way to be down there and be up here. Yeah. I was like, all right, I'm going to, I want to be down there for two weeks out of the month, come up here two weeks out of the month, take care of what I need to take care of here, go down there, build my connections, yeah. be in the studio. But I'd go down to LA and the same night I land, I'm in the studio with a person I used to listen to when I was in high school. Wow. And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. Yeah. Like, I'm recording this person right yeah. now. You know? So it was like this whole different like experience where I'm like, all right. I finally made the choice because for the last few years, all my like my friends are like, bro, come down here. You'd go crazy. Come down here. Come down here. You're in Sonoma County. Like, why are you there, bro? Like, no one cares, you know? <laughs> and I don't know. I just had this, like, weird calling, like, stay in Santa Rosa. Stay in Santa Rosa. And then I remember I went down to L.A. the last time I was down there. Um, went in, paid a visit to one of my friends, you know, show support or whatever. He's going through what he's going through. And was in the studios. And then... I was like, all right, I'm going to find a way to make this work. Next time I come back here, I'm coming with luggage. Because normally I just fly out there, no bags. Yeah. yeah. Buy some white tees when I'm down there. Yeah. And I'm good. Like, no bags, maybe my laptop, maybe not. And then I came back home a couple weeks later. Um, my mom went through a tragedy at her house. And, right. you know, um, and that was the moment where I was like, bro, if I was in L.A. and this happened... I would be so like distraught right now. Like yeah. I, I yeah. need to be, this is why I want to be in Santa Rosa to be with my family, be around my family, be in the community. And that's when like, f like this faith part of me, just like, like I said, things were brewing on the inside of me, not really on the outside too much. And it just like all happened. Like as soon as I made a decision to go to LA, this crazy thing happened. I'm like, Oh, this is God telling me why I need to like type yeah, thing, you know, right, it was like, right. oh, okay, this makes sense. And then it was like, I made, um, two days before that happened with my mom, I made the first song on my project. I made, I wish I knew. And I just like made it in like 20 minutes, like freestyled it, just yeah. like made it really quick. Two days later that happened. And then, you know, I was dealing with that for a while and just, then I was like, I need to just work on this music started working on music again and i started listening to all the songs earlier that i'm like oh these are bangers what yeah. songs can i use on this project right and there was only one song or there was two songs peace of me and think about you i you i made them earlier in the year mm -hmm. but i was like all right i'm gonna use those finished up the project made a few things invited nick and mateo to come play yeah. on the project whatever and then the project was done and zach's listening and he's like hey, um, you should do this for the cover. We're thinking of cover ideas. I was like, yeah, I don't want words. I just want the principal advisory sticker. And he's like, well, why would you put that? And I was like, because that's what goes on an album cover. He's like, yeah. that's what goes on album covers with cuss words. Yeah. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> he's like, bro, you didn't cuss in any of the songs. And I was right. like, nah, there's no way I didn't, bro. Yeah. Like, I've never, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. And I go and listen and I'm like, what the, like, this is right. crazy. I'm like, Okay, that's that's interesting, you know? And then, so anyway, so that all played a, a part in, like, my journey because I'm, I'm starting to realize things. At the end of Think About You, I put this prayer in there that came from a 15-minute voicemail. I mean, voice... Uh, voice Message? Uh, memo. Oh, memo, okay. That you can do okay. on your phone, okay, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember just talking into this voice mem memo for, like, 15 minutes and someone told me to do something at the end of the song and i thought of that and i was like oh let me put this in there found that part whatever and then i remember bro i came to service christmas eve and my project dropped christmas eve morning and people at church were like yo i listen to your project like it's so nice yeah da -da 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 -da. and i was like it dropped two hours ago like <laughs> you already listened to it they're like yeah, yeah. it's so good and da -da -da -da. i'm like Oh, okay. Like, you know, yeah. this is interesting. And then, you know, now, now I'm getting involved in the community at church. Now I know people. Now I'm like, okay, this is, this is different. Now it's a different experience while I'm here. Yeah. And then, you know, that led to obviously me joining the team. Right. So now it's like, okay, I'll mix music for the church. Yeah. Cool. Like I'll sit in the, the back room and 
do what I do all yeah, the time. Right, right, right. It's going to be so fun, <laughs> you know? Like, I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah. And then it was like, no, you're not going to be in here. Like, we want you over here. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, oh, I'm not qualified for that. Like, yeah. I don't, I think I'm better in the back. And then that was also a test of faith. Like, I'm thinking I'm not qualified. Like, I'm not good enough to do this. Like, yeah. I need to, right. I, maybe I should just do what I'm good at. And I remember, bro, like, the first service that I, I was supposed to shadow and, like, be trained and, like, all this stuff. And it was like, hey, so <laughs> we don't have someone for Sunday. Yeah. So here you go. I, I trust you. You know, yeah. I was like, all right, let's do it. You yeah. know, and then I remember just, like, it was almost like, I knew I couldn't do it on my own. And this is as like faith is like starting to like grow. And yeah, now it's like yeah. at a point where it's like, I like it's a different type of feeling. So I, I remember praying and praying and praying about, you know, just the music and me serving and like helping me. Like I can't do this on my own. And then I remember the first time I served, it's like Baptism Sunday. There's all these transitions happening. I'm yeah, like, yeah. yo, what? Yeah, those like, are the more complicated yeah, Sundays. You can't yeah, just bro. give me like an yeah. easy one, you know? And then I remember like the first time I, I I did the sound and I was like, oh, that wasn't even me that did it. You know, I was like, I knew it. I knew because I, I just, I knew it wasn't me that that was able to do these things. And then yeah. then I got into, I did the freedom, the, the, the group. Now I'm, reading scriptures yeah. for the first time so right. we're talking about almost a full year of going to church and mm -hmm. all this stuff happening and all this stuff formulating in me started reading scriptures and it was just like yeah it's all connects all of this right. making sense and it was like this isn't the bible yeah I'm like wait hold up <laughs> yeah. i'm like buckle up you yeah. know like i'm like right. i did not know this was in the bible and then now i'm like now i'm just like reading the bible every day yeah and now i'm just like having these conversations with people that I go to church with. And I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Like, oh, it's, this all makes sense. And it's like all of a sudden this like full transformation is taking place before my eyes. And then that's when you ask, did the outside world change? That's when, as soon as I read the word, as soon yeah. as the word got into my heart, right? that's when everything changed. That's when I was like, oh, okay, for sure. And in January when we did the fast... I did, I, I was like, all right, I want to get closer to God, all right? So I'm like, all right, what's well, going to be the hardest thing? And I just prayed about it, and it was like, go a week with no food. Yeah. You got it. And yeah. I was like, a week with no food? Yeah. Like, I've done intermittent fasting till right. 4 p.m. or something, but I'm like, nah, I don't know if I could do that. Yeah. Like, all right, here we go. Like, But it was like closer to god i want to yeah. get a yeah. relationship with god this is early january so like this is before i'm serving this is before i'm doing the class and it was like all right let's do it and i remember every time i got hungry i prayed mm -hmm. every time i got hungry every time like it was hard i would just pray i would just pray i would just pray and i really look back to that moment of like i did that to get closer to god and i look at where i'm at now and i'm like yeah he definitely like recognized that and was like Okay, this like back to sacrifice. It's like, right. are you willing to sacrifice? You know, and then once I started serving, it's like, okay, now Sundays are just for church. Now mm -hmm. I don't work Sundays. Now it's, we have rehearsals these days. We have class these nights. We have, but every time I sacrifice for the Lord, he always comes in clutch. Right. And it's like, you don't miss out on anything. Yeah. It's, we, we have these ideas where it's like, oh, well, if I give this up, I'm going to miss out or I'm not going to have yeah, enough. For or, sure. Or or how am I going to make make up for this? It's like faith. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. where's your faith at? Like, is, is your faith only when things are good? Or mm -hmm. is it, you know, when you don't truly understand it, you know, and you don't have the answers? And, you know, so. But, yeah, once, once, I, uh, once I read the word, bro, it was just like everything changed. Everything happened. Then it was like all of a sudden I'm now it's like, Okay, bro. It's two, a month later, it's like I want to get baptized. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. I remember when I walked into church, and the first baptism Sunday I saw, I was like, people like sit on there and like yeah. do that. I'm like, I could never. Yeah. You know, that's I couldn't. <laughs> like, I couldn't even yeah. fathom that thing. And then I look, <laughs> I look at it. I got baptized like a year and a month after coming, right? But 
I remember like I knew it. I was like, okay, I, it's it's time. Like I yeah. need I, this is my next step. And then you know, it's just it's just been a crazy journey, bro. But yeah, once once. Once I read the word, everything around me changed. I started understanding. Now I'm studying all the time. Now I'm now I'm really diving into it. Now I'm reading the Bible every day. Now I'm like finding my understanding outside of a sermon on Sunday. Yeah. It's every day. Now yeah. it's all day long. You know, like every single moment and you know, and that just became my new life and everything. So oh that's why I mentioned baptism because of the repentance aspect, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't know what repentance mean. I thought yeah, that meant I'm right. sorry. Yeah. That's it. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, or maybe I did like, yeah. forgive me, you yeah. know? And, and so as I'm, I wanted to do baptism, right. I wanted to do everything. I right, Like the right way. Like I said, when I'm in something like I'm all the way in it. Mm -hmm. And so I started studying repentance and, um, I got that foundations book and right. I, yeah. I went straight to baptism and repentance chapter and I'm studying scripture and I'm trying to learn and I'm studying outside of that. And I'm just like, and I'm learning what repentance means. And yeah, so, I'm, you know, I'm formulating all this and I'm writing out things to repent of and I'm doing like a repentance prayer and I'm like, it's an emotional thing. Cause I'm trying to think all, I'm trying to get all of it. I don't want to lose obviously God knows your heart, but like, right, I want to do sure. everything that I can. And, um, I remember a couple of days before I got baptized, I went back to the repentance of, of the list that I made, bro. And I just got really emotional because all of it yeah. was changed. All of it, my, my, my desire for it changed. My, yeah. Yeah. My, all these things that I had were no longer there. Right. You know, and I was thinking, oh, once I get baptized, it'll be wiped clean. And like, but it, God's like, nah, I got you now. Like, why, yeah. why make you wait? Yeah. You know, and, you know, my desire for certain things and everything went away. And it was like, this is crazy. Yeah. You know, like God is 100% real and he's so generous and, and loving, bro, that everywhere that I turned, every route that I went, he's like, I'm here and I'm rooting mm -hmm. for you. I'm here and I'm working in your favor i'm here and i'm guiding you and yeah and every on my journey bro that's just what i continue to see every route that i take especially while i'm like every route that i take and every route that i take i make sure i'm following him as i do it yeah it's yeah. a blessing bro man i think um you know you're again like i i uh this is one of the reasons I, why I wanted to bring you on because I just feel like your approach and your perspective of God, of your life, and just how God has really just invaded your life, um, and even the way you talk about it, there's like a there's like a sense of awe, right? Like a sense of wonder. Like, man, this is this is cool, man. Like the, I get to be a part of this, and I, I feel like that, you know. Um, it's so cool to see like so like I grew up in church my whole life and there were times in my life that I was just very jaded towards God and the church just because it's like I've always done it right. so why you know but to come across somebody like you who, who you didn't come from that background and you re I mean yes a year two years ago you know you recently came to the Lord so I mean um like just hearing you share your story bro like encourages me you know and 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 speaks life and faith into me too um and like i mentioned before i I've, there's this like um i don't know if it's stigma is the right word but there's this like idea that when people come to the lord that everything needs to immediately change mm -hmm. at that moment mm -hmm. and i feel like your story is like an example that that that's not the case like yeah. sometimes it is a process a journey yeah. right like sometimes it it's at first, it's like, oh, man, this is a cool... I love being here. This is awesome. Why wouldn't anybody not want to be here? And and the Lord is starts working on you immediately, but that what we... The way we judge is, like, the outside. Like, right. we look at the outside. Well, like, you know, are they doing anything different? Do they look at... It's like, you know... And there's, like, this, th there's like this thing at church, yeah. bro. Like, you know, and I'm not, I'm not just speaking to our church, but no, just, just church and period. Um that that's that's a thing like and if if people don't change immediately then it's not real it's not true but i think that there obviously is something to hey if we if we can get people in the door 
and they're coming to church, praise God. Like, we have to have faith that the Lord is going to do what he needs to do, right? And so even if they're still doing things that you're like, uh, I don't, like, hey, like, they're in the right place, you know? Um, and then you talk about people that other believers in church that make that environment, like, faith-filled and life-giving and, and friendly. Yes, Christians should be friendly and kind, you know? Like, then it, like, encourages people, like, hey, this is, I want to be here, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's so cool about you, bro. And even more so, like, I think the fact that you're now, you know, you've been reading, recently, like, reading scripture. And so at church, I'm doing one of the, the foundation tables. Mm -hmm. And that's been, like, one of the coolest things about doing one of those is that I have people at my table that have never read scripture. And so as we're talking about scripture to see their faces kind of go like, wow, like I, (laughs) that makes, you know, for the first time, like for me, it's like, dude, this is awesome. Like, this is what it's about, you know, is teaching people the word, exposing them to the word and then help encouraging them to like, Hey, you can keep reading, you know, like it's, it gets better, you know? (laughs) So, um, so let me ask you a question. You drop your EP on Christmas Eve, and and I've heard your EP and it's excellent. Thank you, bro. Um, it's available on Apple and yep. Spotify Everywhere, too, right? Yeah. 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 And yeah. what's the what's the name of your EP? It's program? called Jaded. It's called Jaded. Jaded. Yep. Jay Perry. Yep. Um, is is that EP before or after Christ? That well, it's hard because I so I started coming to church last year, but I really yeah. think. Like, I know the Lord has been guiding me. Right. He's been guiding me before sure. I even knew who he was. For sure. But I really think that, like, it really, like, my my journey really started this year. Like, yeah. January this right. year is, like, right. really, like, when it really started. But yeah, it the stories in it are all before christ right so that's what that's kind of yeah. what i'm talking about which which is oh probably, then in that case yeah all before Christ. yeah yeah because sure. yeah. you talk a lot about your relationships yeah. um and just your perspective on life and it, again i i really enjoyed it i enjoyed uh your lyrics and just kind of your perspective i am so excited to hear w- what the next project yeah. is going to sound like just because i i just feel again like i feel like for you this whole the experience has just been of like a reawakening, a rebirth, and just kind of the way that you've, the way that I see you is like somebody that just like found life and figured it out. You know what I mean? And that is so cool. And so I'm always excited to see what people do with that, right. um, especially artists, right? Like, I'm really excited. Like, what are you gonna like? What, what kind of inspiration and and ideas are going to come from that experience you know um so yeah i'm just saying i'm just saying i don't know anything i don't know if you i'm sure you've been writing but i don't know if you've been thinking about doing anything else but man bro i'm like super stoked to hear what that next project is like okay so now that you know and, and we'll kind of finish it here but now that you know you're you're going to church man your life is you know you're really starting to figure things out um, while continuing to do what you love to do, and that's help people make music and and producing, like as far as like your job and what you do, ha- w- what has changed as far as like how you're gonna move forward now? That, hey man, like I've I know Christ, I have a relationship with Christ. Yeah. Like, does that change anything? Um, and I'm not talking about like oh, you're only gonna do Christian artists. That's right. not what I'm talking right, about. Right. But more just like posture of your heart yeah. and perspective the way you view the opportunities that yep. you do get like mm-hmm. what does that do for you well at first bro it was it was challenging like yeah. it was super challenging for me because yeah. like like i said like the last the last 10 months it was like i was going to church but nothing really changed outwardly yeah. right but beginning of the year once the like this whole like like I became a new person. Like yeah. all my desires, everything changed. And I used I used to be super nervous about talking with people about God. Like yeah. I used to be super nervous. Like, and I'm sure a lot of people could relate to that. And but then, like I said, like something just changed in me. Where it's like 
I didn't try to. It's not that I wanted to. It was just something that would happen, right? Yeah. So, you know, I I remember my first first time like sharing scripture with these kids, and you know they they obviously notice I go to church, so they yeah. bring up God, and then you know I I start reading uh, the book of Romans was the first book I I read, and you know I had read some scriptures all over the place, but not like a full book. Yeah. And I read. Ro- the book of Romans chapter one and like I was tripping. I was like, yo, yeah. what in the world? You know, like this is like crazy. Yeah. So I shared part of that uh, chapter with them. These younger kids are mm-hmm. probably early twenties. And then that led to the next time I saw them, they, they bring up God, yo, you have me thinking. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And then that led to next time I saw them, one of them was going through something and then he brought a friend and, his friend brings brings up church to me and then he starts giving me his testimony and talking about the things he's going through and I start preaching to him and he starts crying and then you know I'm uh, the, the other friends getting emotional and then yeah. I remember I went to the restroom and like it was like pray for these kids yeah. right yeah but at first I knew I only needed to, I only knew one of them I didn't know the other friend so yeah. I was like I had it on my heart to just pray for one but i thought his friend was gonna leave so i was like i don't know if i could do both you know like yeah i've never prayed at the time i never prayed for anyone other than in my own prayers for sure and so i remember i went back in there we had this conversation kids crying and like it's getting real deep and i remember it was time to leave and it was like can i pray for Mm y'all and he's like yes please like got up he's like can we grab hands and i was like yeah so we grab hands, and I'm preaching, and I'm and I'm praying for these kids. First time I ever prayed for over anyone, and it, I remember like that feeling, bro. I didn't even know what I don't know what yeah. I said, <laughs> you know. I don't know what yeah. I said if they got anything from it, you know. Right, but right. that was I remember that being that was the spark, and like that changed that changed everything because it was like I remember hearing something, pray for these kids, mm-hmm. doing it, and then it was like. Okay, you're ready to go. Yeah, you know, like yeah. now do this. Now now sure. do it all the time. And then now it's just been like consistent, bro. Now I'm just like found myself preaching to everyone I come into contact with, especially in the studio. Yeah. And so back to your question is like I got to a point where it was like, is this what God wants me to do? Cause it's like I'm my whole life has changed, my whole desires has changed, and now I'm facilitating and creating this music that's not for God. Right. If anything, against God. So it's like, yeah, I was in this weird position. I was like, oh, do I even want to do music anymore? Like, is this even what what God wants me to do? And also, like, trying to, like, create content for Christ and, like, change, like, the things that I do on a personal level, where it's like, I don't know what to do. And I remember I was just like, all right, if I want to do content for me, I need to revamp my studio. So I was like, all right, just took a couple of weeks, built some sound panels, painted, yeah, do yeah. like revamped the whole studio. Right. And within that time, it was the first time in a while that I didn't do any sessions for a while. And I was just like living life and I was just w- working on building the studio. I wasn't mm-hmm. like I was around people at church, like some people from church came to help me out and like things yeah. like that. But it was like I wasn't around this environment. I wasn't preaching to people like yeah. my artists, you know, <laughs> like. And it just, and then I came across a scripture in um, First Corinthians chapter seven, and Paul says, "Be as you were when God first called you." Mm-hmm. And I don't know what he meant by that, and I'm sure there's theologians that will se- tell you what right. he means. But right. for me, it hit me on my heart: is like God called me in this place for a reason. God called me in this environment around these types of people yeah. um, for a reason, not right. to call me, change my life, for me to walk away. Like he called me in this place for a reason, so I'm I'm gonna do my best, and right. I'm gonna I'm and then all of a sudden it was just like that feeling of like, do I even want to do this? I yeah, was like, oh sure. no, like I understand why I felt like that, but this like the the artistry has became my ministry, mm-hmm. you know, and now like I I preach to everyone and and that I work with, and I get that opportunity, and and people support me, and you know, and like. Yeah. 
and whatnot. Like when I got baptized, like eight of my artists pulled up and, and yeah. saw it. You know, I like, saw them all out there. And yeah. yeah, I'm sure they stood out. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, yeah. But I mean, I, I think that, that I think what you said was, and I'm glad that you said it. You said opportunity. I think that a lot of times, as Christians, we get kind of caught up with like, well, like what I'm doing isn't really like Christian work or isn't really considered ministry or or whatever. But I think. Like you said, right? Like God calls us and puts us in certain places and spaces with certain people, because that's who we're called to to reach, you know. And I'm I'm a huge believer that, like, um, you know. And I'm I'm glad to hear that you you know you you feel like that's your place. You're called. You're gonna be there as long as God tells you to be. Because if if uh, you know, I'm I'm somebody that's like, man, that's an opportunity, you know. Um, and especially with that, those group of like, you know, artists, guys and girls, like, um, people who don't really get to experience that, you know, um, especially in, in the music scene where like, you kind of have to put up this image of yourself that honestly may not really be who you really are. And you're just trying to match what you see. And so and you lose yourself you lose who you are you lose the things that you know make you you and so um yeah bro i just wanted to add that I, i'm glad that to hear that you're you know yeah. where you feel like you need to be yeah. so and it's and it's encouraging in that way and it's it's something that like just put a whole like i said i went from feeling uncomfortable even yeah. talking about god to like now i've had conversations with people for four hours yeah like one person four <laughs> hours reading scriptures and like yeah. having these conversations with people who they'll they'll never just be out living their lives and hear these things from someone that lived the life and was with them doing certain things where it's like now the same person is is teaching you and preaching to you about certain things you know and like yeah. and it's just been it truly has been a blessing on my life and realizing that it's not a, it's it's not about me yeah, you know like yeah, yeah. it's it's what does god want me to do and what is he calling me to do and where is he calling me into right i don't know if it's going to be like that forever right. i don't know maybe one day it'll be like hey like okay you did what you needed to do and mm -hmm. now i need you to do this you know and when that day comes like i'll gladly you know transition but yeah. for the time being like even when it comes to my family you know and like getting my mom and my sister and like when I got baptized bro when I got baptized another story I told you very, very beginning I grew up split household mm -hmm. I I don't think I ever seen my mom and dad in the same room mm -hmm. when I got baptized they were right there and I got a wow. picture with both of them wow <laughs> Jesus is good you know what I'm saying yeah, like and awesome, that was man. that wasn't again it wasn't a like yeah they came for me yeah but the reason why they were even in the building was because of God. You know what I'm saying? So not only did I get my parents together and I got a picture with both my mom and dad on each yeah. side of me. I also, you know, it's just like it was just like a, a major moment, bro. And like something that I'll forever remember. Mm -hmm. And not only did I get that picture, but my dad came to church. Yeah. You know? Yeah and and my my grandma came to church she wanted to come but yeah still um and then even speaking of my dad like i remember i went over to his house for dinner one night and i'm not really like when family's around like i'm like he he like i'll laugh at some jokes but i'm yeah. kind of just like chill like yeah. whatever but i get along with you yeah. yeah so it was me it was me my dad and and his fiance and everyone left we're just chilling and then they asked me, you know, how's life going? Da, 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 da. Yeah. Bro, I ended up preaching to my dad for four hours that night, reading scriptures <laughs> to him. And, you know, at first he was like, oh, you know, I don't want to like, I don't want to say, like, I don't want to offend you. And I'm like, yeah. no, I won't. Like, I'm not going to get offended. Like, I want to have this dialogue. I want to be open. And, and I think that's something, too, where it's like back to preconceived notions about church. People have that also about believers. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, a believer is going to judge me. Oh, a believer is going to condemn me and make me feel bad for my decisions yeah. and the way that I think. Right. And I think, you know, me coming from where I came from, like, I get it. You know, like, I understand, like, I I, I understand why you wear crystals on your neck. I used to do the mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. I understand why you say X, Y, and Z about the church. 
I used to say the same thing. Yeah. But let me tell you, you know what I mean? And then, so there's just been so many moments, bro, where like these opportunities come and it's like part of me would have been nervous, but it's like I pray on that. You know, I think the praying, bro, and like asking God to use you and welcoming the spirit into you and like asking God to show you and 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 to put things on your heart and to speak through you and to use you as a vessel and an instrument like when you when you're consistent with those things like i've seen i've prayed for people and seen things change in them and have conversations with them and say did you just wake up one day and everything was different yeah tears yeah right it's the power of god you know what i mean like like you didn't do anything i didn't do anything god changed your heart yeah. just like that right. you know and it's and you know there's i think there's no greater gift than bringing someone to the lord you yeah know? that's true and it's just been a it's definitely been a blessing bro that's true Absolutely. man i i uh bro i just believe that god is just getting started with you and what you're doing man i i really am a, a believer and supporter of what you're doing and uh bro i'm um I'm I'm always encouraged to see young guys who just step in the faith and and stand strong. Like mm-hmm. I'm, you know, this you know this podcast is really just an effort to help encourage other guys to just yeah, do that. Um, so, bro, I am uh, honored that you're here to yeah. share your story, yeah. and thank you for coming on and sharing your story. Um, if people want to follow you, yeah. where can they do that? Oh, uh, they can follow me at it's J Perry on Instagram. Um, that's really all I got Instagram but yeah bro thank you for having me it's a pleasure and an honor for real yeah like I remember when we first uh you know connected or whatever yeah I found out that you did videos and I was like (laughs) it's like bro wait you haven't posted in a little bit I was like these are crazy and I remember watching them and so to be sitting here with you talking is is awesome bro so thank you thanks so much for being on the show guys uh man check follow Jay if you don't uh listen to his music if you don't um and if at the very least like keep praying for this guy it's it's people like him that really is making a difference in our communities and helping other people find christ and it's it's awesome to see so jay again bro i appreciate you thank you brother yeah man much love my man you're real crazy okay